with Steve Rowe, Damon Day, The Penny Stupid Project. We're giving you updates again, and this time we're talking about retail arbitrage. Damon, I have some good news. All right, this little experiment of ours is kind of the train that could, keeps chugging along here, and we haven't made a ton of sales, but I have learned so much over the past week or two. I'm using new software now, Source Mogul. It really helps to find deals. This week, I feel like I'm a whole lot better on using this software and screening for places I can buy items at a low price and send them into Amazon and make what I would say is decent money. I'm watching videos online and listening to other people and watching them say, well, you need to look for the items that you're making like seven or $10 an item. Uh, to that, I say bullshit. I would rather spend more time. This is like your rideshare experiment. You either drive Lyft or you drive Lyft Lux. I would rather work half the time and make twice as much. And so with retail arbitrage using Source Mogul, I have found how you can screen out a number of vendors. Instead of just looking at one store and just seeing what they've got, I can screen, I don't know, 50 different places to buy products. Let me give you an example. I found on Amazon, I would never buy a giant bandsaw blade in my life, but I found that I can buy those blades at $35 and sell them on Amazon for $180. And it was just by using the software and looking at a lot of other factors that it becomes a good deal to explore. Now, Damon, this approach that we're taking in this Penny Stupid project with retail arbitrage I think is a lot better than how we first started on day one with Walmart clearance, right? You running around well, the store with your phone. <laughs> Walmart clearance turned into Walmart return. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some nice gifts for toys for tots too, because my wife went through them and said, Oh, this looks cool. This looks cool. This looks cool. So about half the stuff got returned. The other half is getting donated for Christmas. <laughs> Well, if you're interested in retail arbitrage or Walmart flipping or clearance flipping, whatever you want to call it, and you really enjoy running around to the local stores and shopping for bargains, or as one person told me this week, they go to all the Goodwill stores and look for items in their clearance section they can sell on eBay. To me, that sounds horrible. I, I don't want to do that at all. That sounds like a hobby where you just want to be distracted and fill your time. I don't want to do that. I want to operate smarter and not harder. And I would rather use technology to help me do that. This week, I should have delivered a whole bunch of different items that I have found. And I broke the cardinal rule in avoiding electronic items. I know a lot of people have said that. But I found a particular niche that I think is really good. And I'm testing it out. I don't go and buy like 10 of anything. I usually buy one or two of things and then send them into Amazon and we see how it goes. So I would give this week a thumbs up for retail arbitrage. I've got the video coming on Source Mogul and the other things that I'm doing. And we'll be showing results and talking about our experience. But we have come so far from that very first day where you called me from Walmart <laughs> downloading the ebay app in your phone this is how it all started yeah, and like we could do this like we should yeah. flip this stuff oh this is but great we, yeah we flipped a few <laughs> things we, we flipped those doll transporters and yeah now we're waiting for the south park bullshit to sell yeah so maybe <laughs> yeah well the funny thing is we're almost totally out of stock of retail arbitrage items that we've purchased for sale on amazon and we got these stupid little 2021 south park things that in hindsight, if we had to do it again, those those just fell in your cart on day one. We tried to make the best that we could, shining shit into Shinola or something like that, and yeah. trying to get something out of these South Park things. I, I, luckily, we got Christmas coming up, because otherwise, <laughs> I think they'd be dead in the water. But since we're testing everything here at the Penny Stupid Project... We're going to test just leaving those stupid little South Park game things at Amazon over the holidays. Let's see if they move. Let's test yeah. it. Well, and we have we never got any hits, not one hit on eBay. Not one no. hit for no. anything. I sold one of those remote control trucks 
mm-hmm. um, which were really cool that I got at Walmart for 35 bucks. And they're still for sale at walmart.com for $84 plus tax. Mm-hmm. And I got them in the store for $35. But I sold one on Facebook Marketplace to somebody local for $70. Yeah. So that was nice. That was actually $35 profit because I didn't have fees or anything like that. And I still have one more that my wife's like, well, if you don't sell it, I know plenty of kids that I can get that to. She's shopping in my hallway out here where I got all the all the inventory. She comes in and she's like, ooh, looky what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take this to the next level, which is the last thing I want to do is hassle with things arriving at my house and having to rebox them and all that stuff. You know, I had to run to the UPS store today to drop off that giant bandsaw blade. I don't want to do that. So now, talk about working a little smarter, I think. I'm going to have to give us credit with the Penny Stupid Project for this. But there are fulfillment houses that you can use. They charge you a couple of bucks per item. But in the state of Oregon, in the state of Delaware, they're sales tax free. So you're actually making money by having your items shipped to those locations, those fulfillment houses, and paying them to repackage them to send them to Amazon because you're not paying sales tax. Lots of little tips. I hope to share a whole lot with people coming up. I know there are going to be some posts about it. And hopefully we have really good news and a path on how to show people how to do this. Well, I like kind of what we're doing by, because when I'm doing this ride share and we're trying to be trying these gig apps like DoorDash and Uber Eats and all that stuff, I'll eventually get to those. What's nice about really the dichotomy of what we're doing is you're working on things that are not going to be upfront cash now. Like if mm-hmm. you need upfront cash now, retail arbitrage is not the way to go. But it, no. you know, as we can follow Steve on his journey as he's learning these things and learning how to work smarter, not harder, he's spending a lot of time now getting very little of any return. But what he's hoping to do is grow it to the point where he figures all this stuff out and then he can start to ramp it up. Once he figures out how to do it and gets all the bugs worked out, he can start ramping it up and then yeah. he's making a lot per hour in theory. But at the same time, the stuff that I'm doing, somebody can start today and yep. go make $1,000 the first week. So if you need money right now, there's things that we're testing that you could just jump into and make money right now. But at the same time, if you're interested in retail arbitrage or something like that, that some other thing that we get into, you can be doing that on the side. You could be learning, uh, what is that, Source Mogul, Steve? Yeah, Source you know, Mogul. You could be driving for Lux and in your downtime on your laptop, <laughs> following Steve's videos on Source Mogul and learning all the ins and outs of retail arbitrage. So you're eventually building something that will generate money when you're sleeping rather than when you're just sitting there trading an hour for a certain amount of money. Well, this is crazy, but you could actually drive for Lyft and make so much money your first week, you could start buying items to send them into Amazon to multiply your profit and make even more money. Yeah. So it's good. We got two different things going and they're two completely different strategies. But if you need money now, usually a business opportunity is not what you should be spending what little money no. you have on. No. You need to get into something that gets you income now. I can get paid. I can have somebody get out of my car, hit a button, and whatever I made on that ride is in my bank account. I could get paid that fast with Lyft. So ride share. And if you don't like people, we're going to be testing DoorDash and Uber Eats and all that stuff. And if you'd rather drive hamburgers around, that's fine too. You can maximize Amazon, not just with fulfilled by Amazon or retail arbitrage as we're talking about. I woke up this morning to an email that said I had sold seven books that I had designed and put together on Kindle Direct Publishing. They were five in the United States, two in the UK, and my royalty check for that is coming. So there are lots of ways that you can work, make money while you sleep, but the things that I'm doing are more kind of like you've got to fill the pipeline and it takes time. The downside to that is you don't want to invest your time and resources into something that's never going to pay off. If you want to do something that's immediate and you want to see the results right now, rideshare like Damon is doing is something to really consider. Damon, that's my retail arbitrage update. Uh, thank you very much. I will see you soon. Sell those bandsaws. <laughs> yeah. Wool- Woolworths bought Sears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kresge's bought Woolworths. Uh, so, so no, um, I, I noticed the same blades are selling on 